come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show (laughs) podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a mission to conquer the world one listener at a time. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Holly. Me. What do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Blow Up. A movie called Blow Up from the year 1966. Oh, an early one. An early one. Okay, yeah. directed by Michelangelo Antonioni. 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 <laughs> no. Antonioni. Antonioni. I'm sure they pronounce it it's better. Antoni- it's Antonioni. 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 All right, I like that better. Yeah. That doesn't sound so yeah. much like a macaroni. It's hard to say, but it's Antonioni. <laughs> Antonioni. Uh, yeah. Do we know Antonioni? Um, you might. We. He's not been on the freak show. Okay. Um, you might have seen like the passenger with Jack Nicholson. Um, mm, no, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, La Ventura, La Note, a lot of foreign films. But, yeah, <laughs> well, he's Italian. <laughs> he's Italian. If you yeah. didn't, he's Italian. If you yeah. couldn't figure that out, this was his first English language movie. It was, yeah. Okay. And I think he got this because he had done a series of uh, a trilogy or something yeah. of uh, well, uh, they're, unofficial they're, trilogy. Yeah, they're separate movies, but they're on the same theme. Yeah, yeah. So this is coming from, and then he like went Hollywood and made, and I believe it was Blow Up, and then Zabriskie Point, mm-hmm. and The Passenger, the latter two failed at the box office, I mm-hmm. think. and then, But he is revered, revered as one of the, um, it's not the French New Wave, obviously, because that was happening at the same time, right. but there was this new cinema kind of taking place yeah. in the 1960s. He's lumped together with like Bergman and Fellini. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So not movies that I we usually. I lumped together like that's a bad thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like no, I got lumped with Fellini. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now no, I think that's I think uh, maybe I I'm, I I feel thrown off tonight because we watched an actual movie. I know. Like, yeah. This yeah. is uh, yeah. not so something this, that this we is, usually yeah. cover. This is what I would, I would declare this cinema. Yeah. Uh, tonight and yeah, so I got you I know, know you got to think, you gotta think about it. Threw you a <laughs> maybe you don't have to think about. <laughs> well, it. Well, I mean, that's maybe that's the thing. right now. This is a movie, you know, like I said, that's revered and is the subject of think pieces and analysis by mm-hmm. all uh, books of all of the uh, top flight uh, film professionals, film criticism mm-hmm. uh, professionals in the world, and now four yahoos in a basement are going to give it a go uh, and that's why you're listening to this how does it play i might need some enlightenment as to why it's so well revered i might oh, feel like i'm oh, missing I'm, something I'm, this I'm, is I, why... hope I can give that to you because I, I i think i fell in love with this movie tonight i feel like this is why we're going to talk about it okay why'd you bring uh so you had you seen it? i had not seen it so i did a deep so what dive. did you know yeah yeah so i did a deep dive looking for a movie to watch and honestly i was looking for an erotic thriller and Aren't not, we all? Yeah, but not. Uh, I said this to Sean the other night, and he thought I said neurotic thriller. A neurotic which, thriller, yeah. yeah. Which again, we're gonna, <laughs> which we're gonna stack like a Woody gonna, Allen movie. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. why are you gonna why are you gonna ruin it with that? Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah. <laughs> but no, I was looking for an erotic thriller, and I came across. Um, I was I was thinking about bringing a De Palma movie, and then yeah. I read that De Palma was influenced by this movie. Mm. I was like, well, why not bring the movie that influenced him? You know, Ooh. let's let's go to the source. There you go. And I thought, why not? We it's been a while since we watched a. Uh, well, do we ever watch movies like this? Not usually. We do. We do. Sometimes, occasionally. I'll bring up uh, I'll bring up Deep Red, not just because yeah, it stars gonna, the same man. I was gonna say it's it's probably on par with something like Deep Red. Yeah, again, uh, a, serious, a serious movie. This yeah. is no hard ticket to Hawaii. This is uh, a, a tad Rex. more serious. It is uh, ironic to me. Is it ironic? Most Giallo movies of the subsequent decade then, because this, this is 66. And then right. so like the Giallo movies all wanted to shoot in London. And yeah. this movie was such a hit. Um, back hit. in the day. I mean, yeah, I mean, now we sit there. You might be sitting there going like, I don't see it, but. Audiences flocked to this movie. They did. Why? Do you know why? Uh, the mimes. Well, this is why I need enlightenment <laughs> on. <laughs> what is the selling point of this movie? Part of it was that it this movie completely shattered the MPAA 
and they didn't know what. Uh, did they not know what to do? There, there, there was a one before this. Well, there was the Hayes Production Code. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, because the the rating system was proven to be flawed by this movie because like everyone wanted to see it. Yeah, despite like what. Having no rating, exactly. Not yeah. going through the code, right? So, which so it didn't go a, through it. No, they okay. just they released it like uh, you know unrated. Okay, mm-hmm. but people still saw it, you know. And I think, you know, you think in nineteen sixties, and you know, we're talking about like a new type of movie. This is uh, youth oriented. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, there's a heavy influence of the drug subculture. Yep. Uh, music subculture. <laughs> Um, art and fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's mod, you know, I guess yeah. modern. It's a very yeah, modern stylistically, movie. Stylistically, it's very on brand for this time. The and, mime yeah. subculture. The yeah. Mime sub. Yep. Because yeah. you got your mimes covered. And <laughs> I think there was also, you know, like when I was younger and they would talk about foreign films, right? That was always code for the movies with the boobies. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah foreign films. Yeah, yeah. and uh, like, I'm, and honestly, one of the things that I read about this movie was the explicit sex in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which, where was that? Who, no, there who, was. Who, a, who wrote that article? Yeah, yeah. Like where everyone was that? at the time, because the the idea that you got a glimpse of a woman's pubic hair mm. in this movie, yes. uh, drove people to go see the movie because ah. it was transgressive, and they wanted sure. to see like what this mm-hmm. new shocking. You know, thing. It was hip to see the movie. The movie is kind of about like cool culture. There's yeah. a oh, scene yeah. where a guy gives a woman a lesson on how to be cool when listening to jazz music. This is how you do it. You go off beat. She you- was to, to his point. She yeah. was being very uncool listening to that. That music. was the most uncool I've ever seen a person. Be. That <laughs> very ever. very much. She was having a seizure. She, she wasn't was dancing. trying so very hard, and you can't try with jazz. I mean, yeah, that's the point. So, um, David Hemmings is the yes. star of the movie. Mm-hmm. We um, know from Dave Brown. Yes. Right. Which, like, after you've seen this, you're like, clearly he was cast in Deep Red because of this <laughs> movie. Of this. Yeah. yeah. Another guy who thinks he saw something, you yep. know, is trying to prove it. Um, Vanessa Redgrave yeah. is in this movie. She is. is. Yeah. Who we would know from. If these walls could talk to Mission I don't know. Impossible. <laughs> Mission oh yeah, I forgot about yeah. Mission Impossible. Yeah, she, I mean she's been in a lot tons of stuff. stuff. Like, tons of like, yeah. yeah, just because we're not up on her because uh, she's in respectable movies. Like, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> not, not a necessarily. respectable actress. Well, I mean her whole thing I mean, like she did like she was in Atonement. She's done a lot of like British drama, a lot of like Oscar bait movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But fascinatingly enough, she does have a freak show connection because her husband is Franco Nero. Who's really? Django. <laughs> really? Yes, yeah, the original That's Django. And Franco wow. Nero from all those great Italian exploitation movies. Wow. And Die Hard 2. <laughs> is her husband. She's the, uh, I think, mother of Natasha Redgrave, who is Liam Neeson's wife, who died um, in a scheme. Natasha accident. Richardson? Natasha Richardson, sorry. That's, I was yeah, going to say, I'm like, daughter. she had to yeah. have had a last name. Oh, is that Vanessa <laughs> Redgrave's daughter? Yeah. Yeah. And her dad is in The Innocence, which is an adaptation of The Turn of the Screw. I think okay. we were talking sure. about that at one point. But yeah, I remember him being in it, yeah. and he was in a bunch of other stuff. But anyway, she's yeah. in it. Because okay. she's hip. She's the hip uh, Redgrave. Oh. The hip Redgrave? Yep. So, <laughs> David Hemmings is a photographer. He's an artiste. Yes. In swinging 60s London. Yeah, And is. that right there, that's the movie. That, Guys, that's the movie. You're not wrong. That's, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Okay. And I love that. So there's there's maybe, if you have heard something about this movie, um, you know, that it inspired Brian De Palma or it inspired Francis Ford Coppola mm-hmm. or that it's a thriller, you have an expectation going mm-hmm. into it. You do. Yeah. You do. But we're here to tell you it's not that. <laughs> if you read the IMDb right. synopsis, that does not happen until like the third act, yeah. if really yeah. even at all the way they describe Michaela it. Michaela was yeah. like, where's, this, where, where's the story? Where's no, the plot? In, I'm like, we'll get there. In 45 researching minutes, this give it. movie, the impression that I had was that it was a thriller, a murder mystery, and it had explicit sex. Okay. That was the impression I had of this yep. movie going into okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm glad I knew nothing about this going into it. <laughs> um, it 
has it challenged the rating system. Okay, like, that's, 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 but again, 1966. The one, I, know, I know. The one like it's sen- like those okay. descriptions were written in 66. But this one sentence synopsis from IMDb is, I feel like, misleading. Go for it. it, it a fashion photographer unknowingly captures a death on film after following two lovers in a park. Yeah. Yep. There it that's is. yeah, that's 30 minutes of this movie, maybe. <laughs> Max. Like know, and it that, takes an hour that, and but you gotta, to get to that point. You, but that but that is but that's uh, I mean, that is it. Like it's just everything but that there's sprouts. Nothing around it but the, or but, but that's everything it. That, it everything sprouts from that. Right, but I'm su- assuming this is going to be the A plot of the movie, and mm. it's not. Mm. Is there an A plot? No, the movie? this is a slice uh, of life movie. Okay, it prioritizes yeah. just examining someone's life over anything else. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. Okay, <laughs> so this guy, then, if we're just watching him over the course of like two days, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Is it a character study about this guy? This kind of like amoral, free, free floating uh, fashion photographer. Mm. Yeah, I don't really think it's trying to make a statement on him one way or another. I think no. it's just like documenting it, if that yep. makes sense. Like, but I mean, I thought this guy was an asshole pretty much right away. So I don't, but I don't think the movie's trying to tell me that. I think it's leaving it up for interpretation. Uh, which I like. Why do you think yeah. Was, yeah. Why yeah. do you think he's an asshole? Because well. he's extremely self centered and yep. controlling and has mm-hmm. like, he's one of those guys that hides behind like, my artistic vision is so important that I get to make all the choices here. Yeah. And he's that's disrespectful. I, 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 yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't and disagree flighty. with that. Yeah. would be another mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> and flighty. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, whatever, what's the next shiny thing that, or well, mm-hmm. it's just like you know, ADHD. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what is, he's in suffering. Like, what, what caught me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, he's just so self serious and so full of himself. It's like, I know artist types like this and don't mm-hmm. enjoy being around them. And, uh, <laughs> okay. okay. And, I'm like nodding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holly, I mean, Holly, Holly brought her art, art, artiste movie tonight. I did. I did. As she has uh, been exploring mm-hmm. and living in this arena for the yeah, past. Yeah. My life looks just like True this life. movie. Yeah. Holly, <laughs> Holly, uh, uh, your latest threesome. Let's, let's just. <laughs> Well, there is within like a, within a uh, paper backgrounds. Please, yeah, yeah. It's got to be crum- it's got to be crinkly like. and crumply on the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so the the there's a, the plot. Okay. Yeah. That, I, no, I want to hear this. Please explain <laughs> to me what the plot is. What well, I'm missing. That's here. what I'm saying. I don't know. It's we, like there is said. a story. I think. Is there a plot? Um. All the events seem to be, I mean, I guess that's what I was kind of locking on to. It's like all the events seem to be um, the character is doing something and then he's distracted Mm -hmm. and wanders off to do this. And then he's distracted and he wanders off to do that. And sometimes he's distracted back to the thing that, you know, we were interested in. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time it's like this kind of free flowing life. Is that what they're going for? Life. It's life. It's life. He just happens to is get it, into this moment. Is your life like that? Is this like a fantasy fulfillment life, like slice of life movie? I think it could be. I think for I people who I, wanted I to go to swinging London back I, in the I, I, I think so. I think I there's mean, he an aspiration. Does whatever he wants. Right. right? I think there's, there's I like think no there's, responsibilities. Yeah, really. I, I yeah. think his lifestyle is aspirational to anybody watching this. I think Probably. that's why you would flock to it. I think that's why you would enjoy this because I think what he does is something that people would aspire to because again you don't he's an artist he doesn't have uh necessarily any job he has to go to he has no technical rules he needs to follow he's able to do what he wants to do as we see throughout the day he can just go from thing to thing wherever his mind will take him and just do that and it kind of goes into what he you know what he does I and mean, he's a photographer and he, he, he can capture these moments and, I mean, end up selling them to, you know, anybody who's interested in them. Yeah. And he I mean, kind of has no structure to his life and can do what he wants. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's the fantasy life of anyone who does any sort of art is yeah, that he's, I think so. he's successful enough yes. that that's his full time job. Yes. You know this you know? And that's what drives, what, a, drives a Rolls uh, Royce. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what, you, and that's what has, you want as and, an artist. You want to be yeah. able to just meander until you need until you are inspired to do your art and then he is able to do that and profit off of it 
So he has yeah, kind mean, of like the most idyllic life at that point. <laughs> yeah. Like I, don't I can work just a nine to five job. Right. I can just do whatever yeah. and then wander in and out of what I need to do and I can I live off that. I live very well off that as his character. That's ideal, yeah. I think. He, I, I guess my impression of him, like when we first meet him, we see him coming out of what I think is like a um like a transient home or a flop house or something like that. Right. In, in London. And he wanders out and he looks homeless and then he gets in a Rolls Royce and drives to this, uh, you know, play. And then we were like, Oh, he's been taking pictures mm-hmm. in, uh, you know, of like homeless yeah, men in the shelter. Yeah. The homeless. yeah. yeah. So, you know. Well, there's a lot of that, you <laughs> yeah. know, like his yeah. whole, and yeah. I'm glad like that that's, we that's have his photography style is exploitation. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cause his thing is, I'm just going to take pictures of anybody. Like the whole world is my, yeah. uh, if you're out in the open and I can see you, you're fair game. Yes. It's basically, yeah. yeah. Which is invasive. Yeah. Uh, he's which spying it, on people then. And you yeah. know, which goes along with what Michaela was saying about him being a shit person. Because yeah. he thinks that he's entitled to take pictures of anyone and anything, anytime. Mm-hmm. But does he th- even think that he's doing something for, like, the greater good or no. anything like that? I mean, like, you know, my art tells us. He never gives that speech. I don't think so. You know? That uh, you would get in another movie, right. it feels he like, does, to justify he does, why he does he's doing this He give stuff. little things, that, because that speaks to ego, I think. Yeah, but, I mean, And he, he does, does give a thing here or there about ego. Yeah, because he's like, he's basically, anyone that like objects, he's like, you, you know, know people, you, should be, you should be honored that I'm taking People pay me picture. to take pictures yeah. of him. He does drop those every now and again, but I don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's uh, too much for the character. I mean, based on, uh, you know, whatever you think about it, I don't think it... I, uh, he doesn't... I don't think that goes to a disservice to this character. I don't it, dislike no, feels, this character. It feels on brand for the character. Yeah. And his um, you know, um, explorations of the, I guess, the candid photos, right? Mm-hmm. Which would be mm-hmm. the uh, the homeless shelter mm-hmm. and later the, the people in the park are like his antidote in some way to his actual job, which is fashion photography, yeah. which it seems like because they present it as this boring thing. There's women naked in a room when he walks in and he barely even notices because it's so like yeah this is you know punch at a clock this yeah. is what i do mm-hmm. um that's and, not his interest and, though yeah well is. and i do like he gives like a monologue later about how he's around beautiful women all day and he's like and that's it like they're just beautiful there's nothing more to it mm. i do like that monologue <laughs> yeah so he's trying to satisfy something in himself. Then it is a personal, selfish thing that mm-hmm. he is. Yeah, he's got craft for his job, but then he's taking that and make, he wants something more out of it outside of that. But he is. He does seem to be. He's making a book. Yeah, of photographs. Book. Yeah, of uh, life, which they don't look like. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a specific uh, life. Yeah. Um, and then he wants these photos uh, from the park uh, to to end on a hopeful note or something like that at the end because yeah, the rest of the book is too violent and it shows mm-hmm. you know like people living in the slums yeah mm-hmm. um so which we, i mean if that's the case then that's a very weird ending for your book right, right. Yeah. it doesn't really go <laughs> so he drifts this guy um through life uh yeah. through a day and during the course of the day um he does get excited i you know um, cause I guess a lot of what it seems like he reads is bored, mm. yeah. but he gets excited when he's, it's like, well, it's like, I feel like his day is just a, his whole day is just one big search. He's just kind of moving along and going through the motions, but always in search of something. And when he yeah. finds it, then it excites him. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, you know, cause yeah. the scene with, uh, was it Varushka? She's a famous model. I oh, think yeah, Varushka, like, yeah. At the time. Um, this is the fembot from the, the very beginning? Of the yeah. Movie? Okay. Yeah. Cause when he first Feels meets like her, he's like, are you ready? And she's like, I was ready an hour ago. And it's like, okay, we're going to do this thing. And then it like, and then he starts taking pictures and then it cuts to like, then he's very animated and he's like getting mm-hmm. what he wants yeah. and it plays as kind of like a sex scene. It plays like a sex scene. Yeah. For mm-hmm. sure. Because he's getting her to do all these sexy poses, and then he ends up like uh, and he's like actually mounting her. And, yeah, yeah. And then he uses up all the roll of film he spent. He's spent. He is spent. <laughs> and and like, she's spent. Yeah, They're he, both he, spent. No, he artistically, like I said, he artistically came, and then he had to go sit on the couch and be like, <sighs> "Yeah, done." Like the symbolism was very loud. Yeah, <laughs> it is, but it's also not wrong. Like you know, 
That 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 is that how your reason? There's some HR violations in here. Oh, definitely right. Yeah, but you know, yeah. There's a power dynamic at play, also. There, there is when you when you do uh, like. Have you not ever felt this? Like when you when you finish something, you're just like, or you get to a certain point in something where you just like whatever was inspiring me for that moment, I got on there, but I uh, like I'm I'm done. I got it out. No, you know what? I do. I do. When I finish a painting, I'll like literally take the easel and like set it back, and then I'll like sit on the couch and just stare. Yeah. And that's what I do every single time. Yeah, and then, well, uh, so she, it's very no, like, similar to what he did, right? And I, I, you, I think you get this. Like, like I, you know, I, I hate talking about. It. I, I, I edit, and when you when you get to a certain point, like you, 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 you have, you have completed something, and then you will sit back and be like, all right. Whew, there it is. All right. Yeah. And then you just kind of like you sit there in a if anybody walked by and watched you looking at what you're looking mm-hmm. at and you're just like this person hates whatever they're looking at or they're just kind of yes. spent and just done. But they're looking at it and they're, you know, analyzing it. Yeah. And I'm like often, I watch things I finished over and over again, just being like, this I'm is often it. Looking at it. This is disgust. the thing. This is what. Yeah. <laughs> always, always disgust. I've never. Yeah. Always disgust. There's I always that myself. level of just like I hate yeah. this man's everything. never disgusted with his work in this movie. That's I, legit. <laughs> he's always pleased with it. This is. This Do you think is so? Like, well, yeah, I don't yeah. think he is. I, I think so because I think the moments when he's not pleased, it's not his fault. He's blaming yeah. the models. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, see, I think he's not. I think there's yeah. uh, there's a, uh, not a set. There are certain moments of satisfaction. I don't think he gets that all the time. This guy has gone his whole life being praised for everything he does and has never had to actually like face real critique or feedback. And so he's just like dicking around through life. Just see, I don't know? believe that because I don't believe you can get to where he is without facing critique or feedback i don't think he can get and to the a life our is about who you know not what yeah, you know is it saying like yeah. you can really get by on creating well, shit and just uh, yeah, go by who you, you know, know right well, 100%, yes. i think but yeah. i think the movie is kind of sort of saying that well maybe not okay i mean this might be a stretch but like at one point when vanessa redgrave is uh in his apartment he says like you know have you done any modeling because you've got it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it almost seems like he if somebody at some point said you've got it right. and so like he just he has a kind of natural uh eye mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and so yeah, then I, I don't know if he's ever had the I think it's possible that he's heard critique but I don't think he's I think he's ignored it yeah like he's it, above it, it okay I think you're yeah. right yeah. I think yeah. that is the because just I, like I well you don't, I don't, don't think yeah. it's possible for anyone to create something and not get any sort of negative feedback yeah. at some point I think it's bound to happen yeah but, but the, I think do you listen to it and I don't think he listens to I, a word of it you're right I agree I don't think he listens to it I think right there i think it i think it pops back up in his mind every now and again maybe he doesn't do anything about it but i i I think it comes back to him every now and again this is not in the movie or anything like that but well he does i do feel like as the movie progresses we do start to see him soften i I think that we we start to see moments where he's more human yeah you know like when he's talking to his neighbor um the the woman yeah, <laughs> there's a woman next door <laughs> that, that when he uh, first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, he, yeah. Go, he goes over there. And yeah, what's that? There's, a, there's a painter, yeah. right? There's a guy who lives there, Bill. Because I thought Bill I the thought painter. that Bill maybe that that was his roommate, and then there's the woman there, and then uh, and then she's like rubbing. Uh, his name's Thomas, I guess. Sorry. Yeah. Hero. Is it? Uh, is yeah. Thomas. Oh, yeah. David Hemming. Yeah. No, no, uh, I don't want to know that. No, he's just the the guy in the movie. But Thomas. they're like they're they're flirting yeah. in a way that's like it seems like they have a, had a past relationship. Yeah. I mean, later dialogue kind of backs it up. Are you I ever going to leave him or if, whatever? If we're being real, the art community is very incestuous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everybody's just kind of going back and People forth. Swap. With, yeah. People swap. Yeah. I dated this person and this person, and this person. It's yeah, it's very incestuous. Well, it seems. I guess I'm. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a, a rhyme to you know movie plotting or structure. The fact that she shows up at the beginning and then she shows up again at mm-hmm. the end. It's like, what is the significance of the character? Because mm-hmm. ultimately, she can't help him with his uh, dilemma. I guess you know, even if it's somebody that you know that she's uh, that he's relied on before. Maybe that's mm-hmm. it's a yeah. confidant or something. I wonder if why she showed up. Uh, I mean, to that, I wonder if she showed up earlier. When did she show up earlier? Like, what were the circumstances? He went over to after he was done shooting with the models. He He went went like next next door, door, saw the artist, and then they were talking about he wanted to buy one of his paintings, and and he he wouldn't. Yeah, 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 like he was just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so but I'm she, wondering, was, she was rubbing his shoulders. Right. And he was well, like, what I'm wondering stuff. is, right, I wonder if there was a, a, um, a frustration of the character not being able to help him that comes back in the end where he's just like, she's there, but she can't do anything for him. Like, I'm wondering what the purpose of the character is. So do you feel right, like is. there, do you feel like there's scenes missing? No, no. I just feel like this character may have, um, if the character means anything at all, which mm-hmm. I don't know if she does, but if, if in her, it feels like one, two, like two and a half appearances because she is there. Mm-hmm. She wants him to stick around, but there's like, there's something that's not, something can't come to fruition for these two. Right. I have another question. Yeah. When, he, when Vanessa Redgrave is at his apartment mm. or studio, whatever, he gets a phone call and he's joking saying it's his wife. Yeah. Is, it's that, her is that door? the neighbor? Do you think? Or he's like, she's not beautiful, but she's, she's what easy is, to live easy with. To live with. And but then he's he like, says, but we don't live together. And she's yeah. also just, not easy to live with is what he yeah. says two seconds later. Yeah. We just have kids or no kids. We don't yeah, have we kids, don't have but kids. it feels like we have kids. Yeah, and I was <laughs> wondering really. if that was her. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Did I think there's a lot it. unsaid about that character that just, we won't, we, we, we can't get from mm-hmm. those two. I think that's an unsatisfactory mm. area to go because I don't think there's anything I, there, there may be plenty between them. I don't think we'll ever get it. And I don't think we can figure I, out I what like, it is. I thought I was her on the phone because I feel like the significance is that it's coming back to like she's not an extraordinary beauty. Mm. She's not like or like the models he's around all day, right. but she's just that comfort. She's like, yeah. she feels like home. And, and it you feels know, like, I think that shows like a side of like a glimpse into a side of him that he doesn't show very uh, often. And maybe he feels that way because she's not that for him anymore, but she's that for Bill now. What she used to be for him, that comfort, mm-hmm. I think Bill is now getting that based on the love scene we see later. Maybe that's s- something to their relationship. Maybe mm. they used to have that, but now- I don't, I don't know that they were after actually like together together. Maybe not. I, I feel like it's one of those things where she's always been with Bill, mm. but then just like They've had- there's been this chemistry between them sure. that maybe it's been acted on a few Ooh. times, um, and he finds comfort in that. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. I feel like he's not one to actually be in a relationship. No, not <laughs> so. at all. I don't. I know. I got that feeling from like this man has has yeah, and will never be in that. And type then of also tracks like when he says like I feel like we have kids. I wonder if he feels like like Bill is their kid. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. I don't know. Just uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm still trying to work that one out. Yep. But. So I guess the central conceit of the movie and the reason that it appears on the taglines and all that is that eventually uh, this photographer goes to a park in the morning. Uh, well, it's like first a, he goes antique shopping and yeah. he buys a propeller. Okay, so is there significance to that? He's like, I have to have it. I can't live without it. You know, like just spur to, of the I moment. Think it's just to show another his, like, distraction. Impulsive, like self-servicing. I'm attitude. inspired by this right now. I must yeah. have it, and yeah. it could go away in a second. As soon as he gets yeah. it back to the place, he could have no more. He has no idea what he's going to do for it. Yeah, it. I guess it. it's a prop that he's going to have like, in his I studio. I need yeah. this. I need it now. It's yes. just, he's just very self-serving. Yeah. yeah. All right. So he goes to a park. He sees a man and a woman. We later know that the woman is Vanessa Redgrave and a very well-dressed man. And they are flirting in a park. And so he begins to take pictures of them. Mm-hmm. The woman notices him. And comes running over, very nervous, like, and mm-hmm. is like, "You got to give me those." Well, first photos. she's like looking around, like she's looking for somebody, and then doesn't spot him for quite some time. Yeah, and he's yeah. not camouflaged very he's well. Wearing white pants. No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Yeah, in hindsight, she is looking around and over her shoulder a lot in, yeah. yes. during the scene. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that and and that's where my questioning came from because uh, you know I'm wondering like he's taking pictures of her, but also we end up like. And and based on her character, like, what is she, what does she not want to be seen? Like, what is she trying to hide? Yep. In this? She's uh, obviously, well, she's having a very at, at vulnerable, moment. she's having a very vulnerable moment with someone in a park yeah. um, because she thinks no one's around. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's layer number one. There you go. Okay. And, and yeah. so like, you, I mean, you can dive into that. You can be like, oh, she's meeting with someone she shouldn't be meeting layer with. Layer number having, two. She's having an affair. <laughs> right. Uh, something's going on. Uh, something illicit, it feels like. And they've met at this place where you're just like, let's meet at the park. Yeah. Like there's a whole nother story going on with these two. And, you know, based on her nervousness about the pictures being taken, how she yeah. acts when she goes over to the artist's house. 
That's well, what I got. Yeah, because she. Well, I guess that's. Uh, so th- this, it's connecting her to the house. Also, like kind of. Um, so she just you know says in the park like give me the give me the you know the pictures back yeah. and he's like I'm a photographer and blah 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 I'm not giving them back to you. I love how he. It, it it doesn't matter like if he's on one side of the fence or the other to take the picture, but he has decided like I will be the trees, I will be I will be behind the fence, I will be the bushes, like I am taking this perspective to take these pictures, and I will go from tree to tree because yeah. this is what I'm trying to be in order to capture these moments. Yep. Like well, I found that very funny. Like it doesn't. He hops over a fence that's a foot away. It's like it doesn't matter if you're taking the picture, but in order to like to try and be part. Yeah. Of something to capture Very covert, this. like <laughs> yes, in his white pants that stand out <laughs> yeah. from yes. you know, 100 miles away. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so even then, right? So whatever they're setting up here uh, doesn't have like an immediate follow up, right? I mean, like then he wanders about through his day, and I can't even remember. I think he goes and talks to his friend Rob about the book that he's going to publish and all this other stuff. Uh, there's a couple of teenage girls who come over to his apartment, which is like because he's like a rock star. Basically, he's known photographer, yeah. and they just want like him to shoot them. Yes, so they, it's like the groupies who show up like every day. And it's like, is today the day? Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like, no, I'm not doing anything no, today. No, no, no. He's he's like, fantasy world. fantasy world this does not happen like maybe for what maybe five people in the entire five photographers right i'll agree with that yeah you know how many famous (laughs) and and definitely not today yeah exactly yeah well not today but this was i guess but i love 60s right yeah god knows and (laughs) you said groupies every day you made it sound like this is like there's a crowd outside that building every day every day yeah those two it's like in like any uh a movie nowadays like those two would show up and then he'd be like, not, he'd pass yeah. them by, not today, girls. Mm-hmm. And then they would show up later mm-hmm. and like, uh, maybe later. He'd like keep promising, eh, not today. Like just those two. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, you're right. It is it is fantasy. It is it, what you would want as an artist. Yeah. It is wish mm-hmm. fulfillment. Yeah. It's just like, this is what you want. You want people waiting and, and, and barging into Throwing your place. Throwing themselves yes. at you. Yeah, in to, your, yeah. to I, get I don't know what that. you're talking about. I have groupies. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have groupies. <laughs> oh, Holly, paint me like one of your French girls. Yes. <laughs> Um, but eventually, uh, oh, oh, okay. So then, um, there, there is a couple of key scenes here, right? Mm. He goes to meet his friend, Rob. And while he's there, Ron. Rob is like, Ron. Ron, Ron, Ron is like, looks out the window and says, is that someone we know? And he turns around and he sees a man at the window yeah. and the man runs around and goes back to David Hemming's car and then runs off to another car david hemmings leaves the uh the the restaurant and was like mm-hmm. what the hell is this guy doing mm-hmm. and the guy gets in a car with a woman and we see them i think drive off i didn't see the woman but yes he does get in a car and i saw her this time yeah i don't think i saw her the last time okay. because i think it's vanessa redgrave i saw the yeah. spotted the oh, checkered you, yeah. shirt okay, oh, okay. It, so it this is like this is after the their experience came. in the apartment this is, no, this, is, this oh, is before. Before? Because yeah. I was like, because when she showed up at the apartment. I was That's like, her desperation. I'm like, because they've been following her. So there okay. is, right, like this idea. It's the movie like everything is, that is happening in. outside yes. of following the artist. <laughs> it's yeah. all it's all there. It's all happening, but it's all happening in places we can't see it. But I guess the implication of this, right, because I think the, the, the sequence of events was he went out of the restaurant, saw that somebody had been looking in his car. And then checks he, he checks the trunk. He goes back to his place. And then I think freaked out by the fact that somebody was looking at his car. He honks the horn to see if he'll disturb someone in his apartment or his studio. Okay. And it doesn't. So then okay. he's like, okay. Is that what you got? Because I got, I, th- I thought he was still in artist mode at that moment. Oh, shit. He also told somebody on the phone to call him at his place later. And that's the person who uh. called him while she was there. Was he setting something up? I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Oh no, I like that. <laughs> it was just like, call me later. Just, yeah, okay. Call all me right. at my place in an hour or whatever. Right. And that's the phone call that he gets later. Gotcha, he says, is gotcha. his wife. Cause uh, p- for the purpose of to just like disturb what was going on, what may be going on in his apartment. And maybe, maybe he just needs like a call that he can make it be yeah, whatever. Something. He just needs a call for whatever reason, whatever it, it may still could be that he called. The girl like next door. Is it possible, and that yeah, that's possible. No, okay. uh, no, mine was a minor thing. I thought like, uh, as, as like you, you drive up to a, 
a place, you honk the horn for a significant amount of time just to see what it disturbs in the area that he can photograph. Oh, because no. Because he wants to photograph the on natural. his mind was, I, there was a guy okay. like looking. And so when he gets there, he's like, maybe they're in my plate. I don't know. Is that too much to reach? I don't, I don't know because don't then so. she comes running down the street breathlessly, Vanessa Redgrave, and she's like, I need my pictures. And he's like, you know, I don't even know if he asks how she knows that he lives no. there, but I'm sitting there going like, well, the guy got into a car with her and they followed him from the restaurant. He, d- you know. he just says, like, I'm surprised you found me. Yeah, Something yeah. Like that. Good, yeah. He's a famous photographer, so maybe she eventually figured him yeah. out. So sh- there's a negotiation between the two of them, which is weird. Uh, because it's the but fascinating I have kids like, and I don't like, have kids and you know yeah yeah because, the entire exchange between them is odd yes odd but like I can't like I'm um, you can't look away I can't look away from it like I it's just because it's two like two people trying to figure something out here she wants without pictures, saying it out loud and he doesn't want to give there, there there's to that what they've said out loud but yeah it, what, what what but yeah but what is she. She just wants to get those pictures. Yeah. She's very nervous very because nervous. something has been captured on the photos that she does not want. She accuses him of, you yep. know, basically spying and, you know, all this other stuff. And uh, she tries to steal the camera. He eventually goes into this the This is all room. in the midst of uh, like a, a just an interplay between the two of just what are they figuring trying to figure each other out as well? Because they all they she wants something like and he's yeah. trying to figure her out. Yeah, Specific, she, more so. She, she wants the pictures. That's yes, her, that's that, her, that's her she thing. will do anything like, to get the pictures. Yeah. At some point, she takes yeah. her top off and she's like, "Why don't you just say what you want?" You know, thinking that that's gonna help okay. make this happen. So, all right, so she's just hell bent on the pictures. Yeah, yeah, and he's just interested by her. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. He's trying to figure. Yeah, he's trying to figure out what her angle because yeah. you know he's got her over. He's got power over. Yeah. Her, right. He has these. Oh yeah. Pictures that she wants, and he doesn't even seem to be really interested in why she wants no. them. No, she just—he's fascinated he's just, by what she's doing to get them. He's just fascinated by her in general. Yes, by her as a person. Yes, he's fascinated okay. in whatever she was doing in the park, whatever she's hiding, what's making her nervous. However, she tries to dance the jazz. She, yeah, yeah, he's fascinated by her. As right, a person. she is something he has not seen in a while or ever. Like she is, uh, she is the uh, differentiation of what he sees because every day. she's not impressed by him. Yes. Because that's that, that oh, is not what she, that is not what yeah. she wants from him. Yeah. She's not impressed by him at all. Yeah. And he loves that because yes. that makes sense. All you guys so, are the same. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he gives her a roll of film and tells her that this is the photo she wants. But it my isn't. Now that I <laughs> <say> that <out. laughs> so he gives her a decoy roll of film and she eventually leaves. And so then he's like, Okay, I want to find out what's so actually now I have to, right, on I have this to, film. I and this begins a sequence. Which I guess is the most talked about thing about this movie. Uh, I think even uh, Alfred Hitchcock at the time like expressed his admiration mm-hmm. of this sequence because it's basically wordless, right? Pure yeah. cinema for God knows like fifteen minutes or something mm-hmm. like yeah. that, where a man tries to he starts uh, looking at the pictures that he's taken and then the title he starts blowing up the photo mm-hmm. <laughs> what so what's a, a blow up for the digital age enhance there you go enhance. <laughs> enhance. Enhance. the enhance button a couple enhance. times <laughs> yep. and in a world where we can just zoom in zoom in yeah like, we that just is, with our fingers zo- zoom in <laughs> yeah he's in 1966 is a fucking process yeah. but I love watching he is it. cutting and developing over and over and over again yes and I love watching him go through it I yeah, love this whole process. Just I like a photo development montage. I like. I mean, yeah, this isn't a montage. A montage. It's, it's not a montage, just, but I like. It, it, I like it's photo just him yeah. living in those fifteen minutes, yeah. trying to figure this out, and I I love it because like, this is something that has interest in him, and so he gets excited about this. Yeah. And so there's an energy to the sequence as he's trying to figure this out. This is also like, I mean, you know, the kind of. Showing this uh, the 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 technology as you as mm. you're talking about about <laughs> you know how before digital you actually had to develop film is yeah. kind of the thing that like if you watch the conversation uh, with Francis Ford Coppola that's a guy who thinks was, he recorded yeah. a murder 
Uh, that inspired th- that movie was inspired by this. Yeah, yeah. and blow blow up. Blow up. Blow out. Sorry, blow, blow out. out. Again, but, right. Inspired, inspired yeah. by this. Right, because he's but a Foley artist in that movie, yes. right? and he records something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it yeah. gets into the yeah. you know like it's tapes and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so he's sitting in a room with shit, just going like, oh, he gets that exhausting. Yeah, our thing it's that to, yeah. analog kind of uh, how you did this shit before yeah. digital just yeah. <laughs> made it like easy as hell. Um, but anyway, in blowing up the photos. He sees something that he didn't see mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And what is that? Well, at first he sees he sees the couple and then he sees a man hiding in the bushes with right. a gun pointed at the couple. I don't know if I needed the gunshot. The gunshot seemed too clear. Yeah. The gun seemed very clear. It yeah. seemed very clear. I could have gone just with just the face. The face. Of the man. Just yeah. the face just would the have face. driven it home to me. Because it actually took me a couple seconds to figure yes. out what I was looking yeah. at. To find it in within yeah. that, yeah. because it comes yeah. down to just pixels in black and white. And yeah. you're trying pixels. to find... You digital creature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, green. It, yes, it's green. green. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm, in this, uh, I'm, just, I'm coming at this from the world I live in. <laughs> but, in but in that moment, he is convinced that he has saved a man's life. That's what he says. Yeah, yeah. He, he's calling Ron. He's like, I, you'll never guess what I found on this on these pictures I took in the park. I saved a man's life. And Wait, yeah. So like, what? So what? It was okay. So what does he? What does he think he's, he see, thinks, he's seen? He thinks that he interrupted someone who was about to shoot them, mm, okay. and he scared them off. And the woman right. saw him. So he thinks he scared them off. You no, know, he thinks it's, he's scared it's off not the shooter. Until, it's not until later when he's analyzing the blowups again that he sees the body. And that only happens after he's interrupted by the teenagers come back and yes. they have this uh, much talked about threesome on a big crinkly yes. piece of much paper. Much talked about. Much talked about. It was. It was like scandalous. But why? Because in 1966, I think you hadn't really seen American audiences for sure hadn't seen anything like yeah. that in their, in their movies. Yeah, and this yeah. kind of I mean, ushered think of in like, like think a more how, permissive uh, uh, age. Uh, uh, Don Draper would react to this movie. From Mad Men. I would much rather watch Don Draper do this. <laughs> I would I would have watched Don Draper react to this movie. But think of like just what they've seen in their time and then to see this movie. I can imagine. Don, yeah, Don Draper would love this movie. Don Draper would love this movie. Now, love this, love movie. this movie. I guess movie. from today's perspective, you watch it and it's like there's not even actually sex in the movie. It no. is three people yeah. listening to Herbie Hancock jazz music. <laughs> yeah, Herbie Herbert, Hancock does. Herbert, 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 Herbert Hancock. Hancock. Thank Mr. you. Herbert Hancock Mr. does the Herbert soundtrack Hancock. in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And the Yardbirds. And the Yardbirds. The Yardbirds is in this yeah. movie too. Yeah. Did Herbie Hancock? He did something. He did maybe a couple other scores. Sorry, I was thinking like, <laughs> is it Clute or something? I don't remember. But anyway, um, yeah, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page are in this movie. In this movie, in this movie. yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna get to that because we'll I think that that's, that's an odd that's scene. A scene. That's a scene. That, that's a scene. <laughs> I don't know. I read it this way as maybe I don't know. It has like a key to to the theme of the movie. But anyway. Um, so yeah. So anyway, there's the the, girls, the threesome, the threesome, <laughs> which is mild, you know, comparatively uh, mild. But the, the, there's an energy to it. There's they're there's, they're laughing as they're undressing each other, rolling confusing. around. And, yeah, it starts out slightly rapey, and then it gets like tickle fighty. Yeah, because I think yes, because he's trying to f- it's- force them out into a into a mood i think you know like where it's the same thing well, i it, think he's either like i think he's basically like put out or get out <laughs> but they're there to put out it was, but uh, are know, they so because uh, at first they don't seem like it no but you oh, know when I, I, I what i think he's doing is you know the moments when he's taking photographs earlier on of the yeah. fembot yeah where he's just like yes yes that's it give it to me yes that's it yeah, i think I he's it was great. Well, right but i think he's <laughs> taking that energy and he's doing it without the camera to them, or at least that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get that out of them because that when they sense. when they come in, they're one of them is very reserved, doesn't talk, and the mm-hmm. other one is, uh, I mean, she, so they're very they're very giggly. He's and everything. trying to loosen them up. He is. He's trying to get them to a place where he thinks he can I, take what, advantage. I'm not going to say that's not part of it because it definitely that's is. Because I mean, I think in this. Uh, well, taking advantage can mean many things. I think in this, as far as what he can capture on screen and what he can have sex with, like oh, that cause, is sorry because he did have sex with uh, Vanessa Redgrave. I think it's implied they walk off screen together, and then they're getting dressed later as she leaves. Right, like that did happen, but that one was yeah. it, they didn't actually show it. Correct? Yeah. They were they were interrupted though. Did they actually? I don't have think sex? they did. I think well, they were interrupted because I think they, they were, were interrupted. They were both like topless. 
for a long time, just right. like and partying. And then there was a phone yeah, but, call. After, but then he gets his propeller and he gets distracted. But isn't there a scene where he like leads her away by the hand and the camera focuses on something else and cut to later? He, he's leads, showing her, he the leads door. her to the room and then the, there's a knock on the door. And there, and there's uh, a knock on the door for yeah. the propeller. There's a, I, I think, think another they ever phone actually have call. Sex. No, I don't okay. think they do either. I think he has no. sex with the two girls. Yes. Okay. And then, well, I think well, I think that's what he gets because the the two girls is after this. Yeah. So I think that's he gets that out with them. Um, but but I think that is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get them in that, however you feel about it, in that mode where he's not gonna uh, uh, the he's not gonna photograph them. He's gonna have sex with them. But well, like yeah. that is the same thing. Yeah, it's a, like it's that's an excitement that he gets the level. same thing his out interest. of both. Yeah, it's his interest so, level. Yeah, he gets yeah. the same thing out of both the photography and the sex. When he's, he's bored of everything he's else, he's putting on an act and manipulating to get what he wants. Yes. Yeah. So then this gives him a moment of clarity and he's able to see something he didn't see before in the photos. And now he recontextualizes it. Right. I think this is maybe the part where he sees that there's a gun there. He blows it up again. He's like, there's a gun. Oh, no, the body. The body. Yeah. Yeah. Which we saw. But it's so I'm curious to go back and watch to see if I can see it because you said you saw it oh, during that see moment. It. You see it, yeah. okay. a, the, she, because she does it. She, yeah, after Vanessa Redgrave runs away from him, she runs way back in the park, yes. and the the guy she was with is gone. But then we see her pause by this bush, and there is this white thing by the bush, and then she kind of stands around for a while, and then she runs off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so now he is convinced that he's photographed a body. The blow up is. Uh, Rorschach, block. yeah, and not clear, and but so then yes. he goes to the park, and in the park, he finds a body. So, mm-hmm. all right, so I mean, now we have empirical evidence is, that something that, has right. happened. That, but that's after a long, like, the process to get to that point where you think, oh, I should go back to the park and see if there's anything there. Because if you have photographed a body that earlier on in the movie, what happens to the body? Is it still there? Did somebody come across it? Does is there an investigation? As somebody because it's night it? now, right? I mean, right. that's been there. He was there early morning, and the whole movie right. is basically unfolded in this period of time. He goes back there, and the body is still there, you right? Know, but guess. to have nobody that nobody goes to this park, right? Hey, just have that come to your mind is like, <laughs> is it still there? Like it's been a whole day. Like, yeah. well, he then you can't move a body in the middle of the day, right? And so he hears a snap of a twig, thinks maybe he's I being say that watched. Like I say it from experience. <laughs> <laughs> we all know you've killed people. Obviously, Alex. Sean, you can't move body in the middle yes. of the day. Obviously. So who then would dare? He goes and he's like, I need to get my friend Ron and we're going to go photograph the body or something. You're not going to the police, no. right? Which would seem to be any. Actually, his neighbor later is like, Are you going to call the cops? And that doesn't even seem to be on his mind. He's just like, somebody's been killed. You know, we don't know. Have they been killed? Did they drop dead? I mean, we really have no idea. There's not no. enough evidence to this. And so he goes to find Rod, Ron, and then he goes to a nightclub. Why does he go to find Ron? Does he just need he, someone? Yeah, he needs Ron to go and like witness the body. But then, the, well, okay. that's what because we, right. it's such a long trip to get Ron. Like, mm-hmm. does he just need someone to go with him? Suddenly, the end of this movie makes sense. To me. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh a revelation. Oh, okay. okay. I don't okay. know if we jump ahead to this or, or, well, do you, or not. Uh, <laughs> do you want to jump ahead? Do you want to go to the nightclub? Where do you want to go? Okay. Like, don't forget it. Let's just put it that way. Don't forget what you want to say. Okay. All just right. say we it now. Put a put a pin on it. Well, uh, we're talking about reality then. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Ron seeing uh, the body makes it real. Right now he has, it's not, I mean, it's, he has some evidence of something, but it's, he's pulling this idea from these photos that yes. he's taken. Yeah. We don't actually know what's happened, but we do know there is a body, but now you got to like, if somebody else observes it, then it's real. Right, right. now, it's just or him in the it, middle of a it forest. And like, what can you? Yeah. And the more people you bring in, it becomes outside of you, outside of your control, outside mm-hmm. of what you can do about it or what you think about it. Yeah. And the more people you bring in, it opens up possibilities, which are not. Well, it makes things more concrete, I think. There's like, that. Right? Yeah. It's, it's somehow, if we all agree that, yes, there's a body there, then there's a body there. And if right. we don't, but, but then, then I then, can't prove it to you because right. I guess that's the next. All of his evidence disappears, <laughs> right? Yes. The following day, or the uh, next morning, I think he goes home, 
Mm-hmm. And someone has come into the apartment or the studio and taken mm-hmm. all of his stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Except now, for one grainy photo. Which yes, all is the, the Rorschach. All, all, all yeah. the big what? photos he's hung up throughout the apartment. And again, he just hanging up anywhere, which was uh, a, a funny part about <laughs> this moment of him studying all his pictures. Because he's making big, like... You know, uh, two foot by one foot pictures and hang them everywhere. But then he's just finding places to hang shit, which becomes very funny. It's like, why would you hang it there? I can relate to this. Yeah, but but uh, but that's I understand it. Like setting things in weird places. So yeah, just yeah, yeah. Because, because you can't do take, it all the time. You can't take one down because you need that as your thought process throughout the yeah. thing to lead to this. Photo. But the sequence as it's shot like tells us things, but it makes us see the way he's seeing it. Right, yeah. he's blowing up. Her reaction, she's looking right, yeah. you know, over her shoulder. In the to next, the photo. Then he puts up next to it the photo of what looks like a guy in the. We, we don't even know. It, I mean, it's blurry. It, it, it just looks like bushes and a, a little fence, and yeah. then you can it, and like then maybe a body a face, and her and then, doing yeah. all this stuff. So it's like they're creating this idea that you have seen a guy with a gun mm. menacing a couple. Yes. In a park, and then there's a dead body, right? Yes. And then I guess the body says that, okay, maybe with the idea that he came up with actually did happen. And so he's like, okay, I got to get, you know, somebody else to agree that there is a body there, yeah. a crime has been committed, and whatever. There's a stop off in the, but when he goes home and all the stuff is gone. Mm-hmm. You can't prove it. So right. mm-hmm. there's yeah. nothing to prove that your version of reality at this point yeah. is true, right? Right. right. Only, yeah, because he's only got what he's got in his head, and the one picture of maybe a body is is all that's left. Yeah, which you can't shows like. It, it doesn't neighbor, look like she's like. It looks like one of Bob's paintings, right? Which is just you know, splatter just paint on a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's not going to hold nope, up for anybody. We'll like you said, the shark photo in Jaws, yeah. too, which is a great <laughs> relation, a great perspective on it. Yes. Well, and, no, and to- nobody has nobody has seen Vanessa Redgrave except for him. Right. True. And, also true. And true. even when he goes to like hand her the phone, she doesn't actually talk on it. Oh, and true. her yeah, and her yeah. phone number. The bird, I, the bird that's with me doesn't want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah and yeah, the phone yeah. number isn't a real number. So right, so she's Ooh. gone. She's in the wind. Ooh, not misty. Well, there is this scene that I was like, okay, what the hell is the point of this? He goes to, and this is where we're saying it's the Yardbirds, uh, Yardbirds show. Yes, <laughs> where it's the most zombified uh, audience. It's oh yeah, like, uh, it's like they're watching performance art, but they're watching a punk band. Right, like, yeah. like, 60s, like if you're watching a performance yeah. art, trying to figure it out, but. But it's actually a r- punk rock and roll band. Yeah. Like you're, and There's two people actually dancing. Everybody else. Right. Which, I'm like, okay, <laughs> thank God. Somebody. Are we just supposed to read it as everybody's like tripping on acid at this thing? Do, do people trip on acid and just go blank face? And yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, you my, go. Ka- <laughs> Michaela yeah. chimes in. <laughs> yes. So Drugs yeah. do work that, that way. Be, I mean, either. Because I read it as either uh, uh. the filmmaker had misinterpreted the thing that he's covering, or it's a coded thing where the audience knows all these people are like yeah. tripping the light fantastic. Why are we watching <laughs> yeah. this yeah. show? <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense. Okay. Honestly. All right. I'll and go with at it. At this show, Jeff Beck like gets yeah. uh, feedback, and so he smashes a guitar, and the guitar neck he throws to the audience like it's a fucking uh, sacrificial, like holy object, yeah. and they swarm oh, yeah. all, all of a sudden there's life, and they swarm all over it. Life. And... Uh, uh, David Hemmings has the the, the thing triumphant. The he grabs the neck of the <laughs> guitar and runs and emerges yeah. from the club and with like, the yeah, and they're like mobbing him. They're yeah, like, yeah. But then once he's out onto the cold light <laughs> of day, love this. he's like, "Well, I got a broken neck of a guitar," yeah, and he discards it. And then another guy picks it up, like, "Oh, maybe this is something." And he's like, "No, it's a busted guitar neck," and throws it down. I feel that guy. <laughs> so I this, understand that guy. He's like, "What is this? Ah, pfft. ah it's trash." But it's you're like, "What the fuck is the point of this?" So it's like <laughs> this is saying something about there's like an idea or something that is valuable when people want it. Right. Yeah. But then when you look at it with context, it's like ridiculous. It okay. It's be. a broken. It's a this busted also, piece. Right. Of shit. But this is also another. <laughs> this is also another like uh, looking at an artist. I mean, the the band being the artist and what they produced, and and they happen to produce a neck of a guitar at this point. And you know what is the value of that? I think talking about art 
I mean, because we're saying it's junk. He makes a reference to a junk store. He goes to an antique store that's yeah. a junk, you know, place, or it's all sorts of this stuff without context, like you know that you see. But I don't know how that ties to like the actual like the theme of the movie, which it does seem to be the end scene of the movie is more explaining what you just saw. But anyway, uh, to get there, uh, Ron is no help. Ron is no help. Uh, Everyone's because, high. Everyone's high. And David Hemmings is uh, distracted again by the lure of drugs and <laughs> passes out. Right. Yep. And so the following morning, he alone goes to or to the mm -hmm. park mm -hmm. and there's no body there. Yeah. <clears throat> And so I there goes everything. Would, would, there, would there have been if he'd gone that night? Did, he did, he, he, went, he, he that went that night. night but he went that he, night right, by himself was, gone. without a camera. This, this is yeah. his yeah. life. Yeah. Coming back to things and they're just gone. If he would have come back. Uh, yeah. That night. I know what you're saying. Or with what, Ron. Would there yeah. have been a body? Would there then, have been? Was it ever actually there? There is. No, I didn't get the impression that he was like unreliable narrator. Like he's, uh, he seems to be. He lives within the world of the a world bunch that of. He's uh, creating the world that he's making up. Well, I mean, oh. like the acid, the you acid so? world. But I believe everything I that happened that, in this movie happened. Okay. Do you? I don't know. Okay. I'll refuse to answer the question. <laughs> Okay. Can I treat the witness as hostile? <laughs> <laughs> what did Kayla, you think? Did everything that happened in the movie actually happen? Is it so. is it an objective? Well, I mean, what's the well, what's the what's the end scene of the movie? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's, let's, the let's get there. Okay. Let's get okay. there. Yeah. So having uh, yeah, he, found that there's no body, body he's like park. deflated, right? Yeah. He's like, well, shit. And then he kind of wanders away, and uh, there's the this like. Car full of mimes. Okay, I did oh, read Roger mimes. Ebert's review, and Roger Ebert did say that like this is actually would have been some custom uh, the kids did in certain days or something. Or the is a fundraising thing or something. I don't know. I believe there's something to it that is lost. We sit there going like I don't know what this is. It looks something like something years yeah, later. A car I believe full it's of gone. mimes yeah. because they end up miming. They're all faces that are painted white and they're acting crazy. The loudest mimes. Yeah, and like you say, a car full of mimes. It's like there's forty of them hanging off a pickup truck. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes. Okay. truly, yeah, truly. Like, it's yeah, it's a lot. It's, like a, it <laughs> yeah. looks it's like it's a lot for it mimes. Looks like they escaped from a parade. It does. Yeah. yeah. It's without any kind yeah. of context. We don't know. But one of them got trapped. But they are seen the at the beginning of the movie, yeah. the very first. I think, like uh, maybe but that's the first thing we yeah. see. But they're it loud is. mimes. Yeah. They're loud mimes. They're screaming. Yeah. They're screaming. Yeah. They're yelling. The car's yeah. like honking. But then, so maybe they're not mimes. But maybe no, they're but they kids. Are. No, then, but then, but then maybe they, they just mime. But as then a they thing see a tennis court and they mime the shit out of it. They're not dedicated mimes. Yes. So they, at this see, they find court, their mime opportunities. Yes. So this is what happens at the tennis court, right? I appreciate uh, this. You can't be a mime all the time. You right. got to wait for your moment. Yeah. Well, Hemming's walking by, and these kids, two of them, <laughs> go into the fenced-off tennis mm -hmm. court. Yes. And they start miming a game of tennis. Mm -hmm. And everyone is completely in on this bit. Oh yeah. They're watching this fake ball go back and forth. All the other, the, the, the other all Yeah, what is that thought? But process? David David Hemmings is not right. He's just walking he's by observing. and he's yeah. kind yeah, of he's amused by what these kids are doing. And at some point, right, and because it, it goes on for a very long time, very and I was like, time. man, this is going on for a long time. I'm like, yeah. what are we doing here? And I'm uh -huh. like, what, what are you think? hearing? Well, nothing at that point. But yeah. not you, at that what point. do you get to? But then, yeah. But they, I'm like, why Why the extension mm -hmm. of the scene? Uh -huh. I think it's for you to watch and envision in your mind a tennis match, yeah. right? Yeah. And then at one point, the ball is hit outside of the tennis court, mm -hmm. and the girl motions to him to in the universal language, can you go get it? And mm -hmm. he does. Mm -hmm. And he picks up a invisible ball, and he throws it back, and then everybody starts playing. But we just look at him, I think, mm -hmm. and you hear... And a you tennis see, match. Yeah, you yeah. see, you see him like following with. His he eyes. follows the ball, He's following the ball with, with his eyes. eyes, and then you slowly start hearing the the hits of the <laughs> the rackets <laughs> and the ball. I think that is saying right. If we collectively believe that something is there, that's reality. Mm. But that's going to like that whole thing. The whole movie takes us through this thing of like. So it is like questioning our reality, right? Mm -hmm. Is that basically? Like you can see all this stuff and try and put it together how you want, but like that doesn't actually mean that it's real. It has to be agreed upon by. Are you saying because it's not because 
Because he's the only one who experiences this technically throughout this entire movie. Yeah. And so he had the so experience. We have, so we have. Uh, we're witnessing it as so a, what as we a have movie. Is, but what we have is a single person experiencing something that might not be real versus a group that is experiencing something that is definitely not real, but to them is reality. They're, yeah. They're There's, a lot, like yeah. There's a lot to we, be said. There's a lot to be said. All yeah. of them see the ball. Yes. <laughs> and eventually as he hears collective. the ball as a collective. Right. We but as a single person, thing. which he is. Does that matter? I think that it's only supposed to highlight that he's an unreliable narrator. I think that's the only narrative purpose it serves. Because it Man, does. I wish because that- he hears the 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 rackets. Yeah. Does hear the rackets. I really wish they'd cut to black. Is that where we're saying? So we're saying that he's delusional at that point. And so that means everything but that I'm what, happened before the, what that. gives the, the movie's saying he's an unreliable narrator, you can't trust his point of view. That's right. But think what? But saying. okay. Do we get that throughout? Or well, just I think that's could the be, reveal. It could be. Yeah, the reveal, could be a reveal. Is that he's unreliable. Does anything? What, what does the rest of the movie back that up? Well, I you wouldn't so. know until the end yeah, of the movie because exactly. yeah. everything that happens is experienced yeah, from, right. his from his point, his point of, view. of view. Right. Right. And so it leaves that open. Mm-hmm. And this is why this movie has uh, <laughs> enthralled and perplexed people for yeah. generations, right? Like, well, you like we were saying earlier, it. when talking about um, like the the backstory of the the person that was like checking his car, and and mm, yeah. uh, like there's all the stories happening around him, yeah. but we're not seeing it because mm-hmm. it's not about that. It's about him. It's always about him. It's about whatever he sees. It's about his world. So it's his narration. It's what he's mm-hmm. what he's believing. Right, but do we? But there is a okay. But there is uh, is the movie. But we've talked about a movie happening around him. Is that movie happening around him? Well, it's just like Fight Club. And how much of that should actually happen around <laughs> Edward Norton? It, we don't know because he's an unreliable narrator. You yeah, know? but something so, happened. Yeah, but we don't know to the extent okay. we don't know where reality starts yeah. and his reality I, begins. I know? think but, okay, he, I think he, he really I think he really did go to the park. I think he photographed a couple that was like playfully kissing at the park, and he made up the rest of the story. That's, really? Yeah. That's what I think. Just maybe out of maybe out of the tedium, maybe out of the tedium and the boredom of of yeah. of, of of his day to day artistic life, and that he wants more out of, he invented this. That's what I think. Okay. Mm, I guess yeah. My okay. interpretation. I'm going to go with everything that we saw actually happen. There was a body. But I like. I that. don't know. <laughs> I don't know that like the bo- the guy was shot and killed by the uh, so if, that does, if in, in my <laughs> like okay so I guess if if I'm building what I think the movie is saying or not saying but showing mm-hmm. I think the woman Vanessa Redgrave is having an affair with somebody and she has lured him out to that location to be killed by a third person who is a lover or something, right? Because she is in the car with him. So off screen, that guy is, maybe is killed is shot. Maybe it's her husband that she, that she wants to get out of. Yeah. yeah, Okay. Yeah. She brings him out. But the the, point is we are making up this. Yeah, we are. We're doing, yeah, we're doing all of it. Which is exactly exactly what they want. But this is what, yeah. yeah, this is the, what I guess the movie is guiding you to, Maybe believe that's exactly happened. what he's sure. doing. He's yeah. making up the because story. the possibilities. Okay, so what if I told you? Okay. Oh, oh, oh! Don't and maybe make, you saw don't this because you did don't mention make it definitive. Did, I like being in the nebulous. Did don't. anything get cut out? Mm-hmm. Okay, what oh. got cut out? Oh, I don't know if I want to hear I'm not this. Gonna, uh, <laughs> cert- allegedly, allegedly, cert- certain scenes were not shot because they ran out of budget. Oh, I heard that they did. Okay, so I heard that there was a there was a guy who was in the movie who said that there that shots with him and Vanessa Redgrave were shot. They were shot, or they were supposed to be shot. Okay, Okay. he said they were shot. I thought I thought I read that they were supposed to be shot, and they just didn't get made. Which I guess would have given more concrete thing to like she was with the guy, you know. Uh, <laughs> who allegedly shot the uh, yeah. the? But again, the this is guy. this is just one yeah, person's but that's account. We don't right. know for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're done yep. about <laughs> I don't want to know for this movie. Sean has his fingers I in do. his ears. I don't want to know about he wants a better experience. Of this movie okay. that is not because I like okay. what what, he, yeah. okay. what is the movie is what I'm going for. This is not okay. what right. I want to know. What didn't make it or what was cut or anything. All I, right, we're done. We're done with it. Okay. Well, let's blow up, a blow up, not blow out, blow up. Blow um, up. We we all right. We have to watch blow out now just because we can't. From the I show. like blow out's one of my faves. Yeah, yeah blow out. I haven't seen blow out. It's is, good. I want to see it. Well, how would you describe it? It's like 
It, it takes an inspiration from this clearly. It yeah, feels yeah, like yeah. It. it's, it's, it's tedious in the same way as this movie is tedious, but I don't know. That's it's more like, palatable for It some gives reason. you the resolution of yeah. this movie. Save it because <laughs> eventually we're going to bring it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We needed to do this first. Yeah. Right. Eventually yeah, we're we'll, going to bring we'll it. We'll get there, yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I guess now we're going to review the movie. Uh, and first of all, we're going to take a little breather <laughs> and a palate cleanser. We're going to read some of your mail. Thank you for sending in your mail. We're going to have uh, it delivered to us by our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Uh. <laughs> wow! Yeah, Igor, nice Jesus Igor. Christ, that's like uh, fulminating fumes right there. <laughs> I'm trying to class up the joint with, with this movie, and I will be here to bring us down. <sighs> wow, Igor, not a photographer. No, bathed what in photochemical. Think? But uh, definitely oh, yeah, a peeping tom. Uh, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely, say, yeah, definitely a watcher of people. Yeah. <laughs> There's another yeah, what do you think movie. his vocation? I mean, like, you, you think he does any? What hobbies? He does, does mime on occasion. Oh, yeah. I yeah. believe it. I believe it. Do you think though, instead of like Rear Window being or Peeping Tom being his favorite, he's more like he thinks like Disturbia is like the best version of that story. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't go with the classics. No, he the likes remakes. the new age yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I guess we should let the good folks at home know how they can follow along and participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Blow Up, Steve Carney writes in and says, I blind bought the Criterion Blu-ray of this and fell in love nice. with it. It's a bit slow and artsy, but damn, did it put me under it spell. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Dyson Rises writes in and says, funnily enough, I had just rewatched the movie it inspired Blow Out. Yeah. yeah there you go. Sure. And Millitime says, hey, that's the guy from Deep Red. It's James Spader's <laughs> long lost British brother, David Hemmings. There sure you is. go. <laughs> Truly. James Spader. Who did we say he would look Michael like? Michael Pitt. Michael Pitt. He Michael Pitt. Like Michael I, I, Pitt. I put in there Robert Mitchum just in the eyes. Yeah. For all um, you old people who know who Robert Mitchum is, <laughs> we know who Robert Mitchum is. Yeah. Okay, I'm with just you. making. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, don't you, okay, I don't think you know Robert Mitchum I, I then, but okay. I do though. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, Name three Robert I've Mitchum seen movies. Guy the Hunter. Oh, our, and, and Cape Fear. farewell, my all lovely. Right, all right. <laughs> I am proven wrong. Yeah. Um, We've mentioned two movies, and then that's all I need. <laughs> El Dorado. I mentioned three, okay. and that's four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Last week, we watched a movie called Tango and Cash. Simon <laughs> Carter wrote in and said, um, okay, so he's talking about a scene that was uh, dubbed in the TV version of the movie in the UK that had a line, <laughs> Rambo was a primitive. And he says, even at 12 years old, that made me laugh. Was a primitive. Was a primitive. I love it. They couldn't. That's the best they could come up I with. Guess Rambo so. was a primitive. Yeah. Rambo punk. Yeah, Rambo was a punk. punk. Maybe yeah. it doesn't fit the the what he you know the, his lips. Sure, primitive sure, sure. is way farther from primitive. pussy yeah. than yeah. punk. Pussy punk. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we gotta figure, I'm trying to figure out the you know, no because you gotta figure out the mouth movement. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're doing. Some people don't care. <laughs> Some way, people don't care. Yeah. There's way more syllables in primitive. That's why right. it doesn't make any sense. This is shit you gotta think of when yeah. you edit shit and you're just like, what word fits. the the mouth that is not putts? working with this. Yeah. Rambo was a putz. Putz. Yeah. I know, yeah. Putz. Yeah. Um this my, there's an ending to pussy that just fucks everything up. Because you gotta find a word that hits that. Okay, go on. There's an ending to pussy that fucks everything up. <laughs> it truly, truly. <laughs> you heard truly. it here on you the Saturday night. Truly. Uh, Mike Kling writes in and says, I love oh. the cameo from Robert Zadar, uh, aka Maniac Cop. Yes. Yeah. Is it a cameo? That's a role. That's a role. Yeah, that's, that's more of a cameo. Yeah. That's a role. He's a cameo when you're like us and you recognize him from across movies. It's like <laughs> right, a, your yeah. own universe cameo. Will Ferrell has a cameo in the season of The Boys. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's a, a cameo. Bit, yeah. An unhinged cameo. <laughs> a yeah. bit part. I had no idea. I literally gasped. I will now I watch. Saw it. <laughs> Um, I was surprised. Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> and Daniel Garcia said Stallone was great in Lock Up, and Kurt Russell was great in Breakdown. Um, oh, Breakdown! I I've love had that on my Breakdown. freak show list for a while. Breakdown. It's such a good movie. Um, Friday the Thirteenth Part Five was the movie we watched the week before that. Mark Harrison 
writes in and says, if I remember correctly, the MPAA was told that the final chapter was to be the last film in the series, so they went easy with the censorship. Uh. They weren't impressed when they made another, so in sp- out of spite, they cracked down <laughs> on the series from here on out. Damn. That's funny. And I can't remember like the actual... But it was like, this is just getting way too, you know, the violence in movies was causing violence in real life or whatever. Yeah. And so they just started hacking it out of everything. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, I always wondered if if Roy had a son with a married woman that wasn't his wife or some other kind of situation that caused him to hide that he was actually the father. Then after the kid was killed, he felt like he would never get a chance for his son to get to know him. And that's what caused him to snap and go on a rampage. However, <laughs> there should have been some kind of scene where Roy... Went after the guy that killed his son. I I think you yeah. you've written you're writing the prequel to uh, to Friday the Thirteenth Part Five that is an offshoot of this that takes place between four and yes, five. Yes, I think that is 4. what 5. you have done right now. Yeah. You're you're filling in a lot of story. Well, also get well soon, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get well soon. Yeah, hopefully this isn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't jinx. <laughs> Sorry, get well soon. Move on. Yeah. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan wrote in and said, I don't think that Friday the 13th side characters get enough credit. Huh. Most of the time, they're pretty damn entertaining. With other franchises, most seem so serious. These characters are getting stoned, yes, but at least they're having a good time. Yeah. Is that because of our criticism of Friday the 13th characters being like obnoxious this is not one of those movies though this we is did some of the that. least obnoxious ones in this right. movie. but we did fucking, we like, did do that motorcycle yeah but mama. the whole remake everyone in that remake yeah. is insufferable we have like, mentioned it a lot lately yeah. especially with in a violent nature yeah. we also mm-hmm. commented on friday the 13th a lot mm-hmm. so i think we had recently a lot of complaints about side characters in friday the 13th movies yeah, yeah there was those two yeah that were like fucking Texas Chainsaw 2. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Those two were awful, but the yeah. rest of them, not yeah. that bad. Yeah. Not okay. that bad. I've seen worse. Uh, Thomas French says you might not want a TV series, but it's the closest you'll get to a movie. That's just how it is. Talking yeah. about the current state of the Jason universe. Jason universe. <laughs> oh, I don't want a TV I series hate. either. I, could, I don't want I, anything I, called I Jason good. universe. Video game and movie. Yep. I, I need. like what I have. Yep. I don't need more. I don't need a VR experience. I don't even like some of what we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're, we're tentative on some of what we got. Yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe, I don't need any more. <laughs> maybe figure out some good shit for your movies and then we can go from there. There you go. Uh, well, thank you all of you for writing yeah. in. We really appreciate it. Truly. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We love I, hearing from yes, you. Yes. Love you. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie blow up starting with Michaela. That's this might be two weeks in a row. You can go first. Go first. All right. What do um, you think? Yeah. I've never seen this before. Mm. And I mean, man, I like movies from this time period because they are so of this time period. And I think it's culturally important to have movies that are time capsules. And so I love going back into a time capsule because like, man, you just look at the clothes and this style and it's just like it does feel like another world. And I do love that aspect of it. Unfortunately, what I didn't like is a lot more was about the this movie. movie. Um, my goodness, there is no plot for most of this movie. And that's fine if uh, like slice of life movies exist and they're fine and they have their place, you know, I'll watch boyhood once you know, <laughs> and never again, probably, but you know, there's slice of life movies and they exist and they fill a niche. But I feel like I was sold that this was going to be like a thriller or like a, like a procedural or we're going to, or a mystery or, and it's none of those things. Um, there is no plot until, over an hour in the movie it's very much just following this guy through his day-to-day life and this guy is just insufferable and embodies too many qualities i don't like about artist types in general he embodies a lot of the stereotypes and a lot of the like qualities that i don't care to be around so i don't care to follow him through his life because he's obnoxious um and i like some of the cinematography i like some of the choices it makes but it's just there's there's nothing to it. This is like a bare bones, like, you know, sl- calling it slice of life, like implies more whimsy than this movie has, you know. Um, so it's too minimalistic and bare bones and like experimental for me. I've I've put in my time watching movies like this and I don't care to do any more of it. So it's going to be a pass for me. Callum, what do you think? 
Uh, so this is a, the second time that I've seen it. So the first time that I saw it, I think I came to it probably the exact same way that Holly did. I read that it had inspired these great thrillers that I like. And then you watch it and you're like, <clears throat> it is a movie that uh, I, I guess on the initial pass struck me the way I saw No Country for Old Men. The mm. first time that I saw that where it was like, there's scenes in the, that would explain and give me satisfaction that you're deliberately not showing me right this is a movie yes. that seems to have the idea is that it's a, a thriller a mystery that has no resolution we don't know at the end of this movie if there was a murder at all anything and or who the killer was so this time right this is what a second watch uh, does for you because you're like okay i know that that's not where we're going and it was kind of amusing to listen to uh some of the comments <laughs> as we were watching because i'm keeping my mouth shut i'm like well i know she's not dying later you know i know this, uh, i know this is going so yeah, i kept saying like she's gonna die later yeah she's you're thinking like later. a standard yeah. so this is yeah, like no. um not standard i suppose now we talk about these kind of movies as like art house cinema yeah um back then when it seemed like uh you know because i guess that's the thing it's hard to put yourself in the position of a 1960s era you know audience who's seeing this kind of stuff for the first time and is really turned on by the idea that like this is uh a uh, movie that's focusing on our generation and is just trying to be cool and just kind of hip and swinging and, you know, is just meandering. Right. But this time around, I'm like, Oh, it actually is like just about watching the guy kind of meander as he, it's like, I don't know if, uh, again, if it's supposed to be representative of a generation, this would be the boomers, right. Uh, that there's just this kind of boredom, with life and every once in a while you you know something comes that attracts your interest and you get very interested in it and then it fades away and life becomes bore, boring again until you find something else that you know and it just keeps going on and on and on and eventually i think you know in this guy's uh future you know it's like he had this moment and he was like all into it but it'll fade and you know and like the fact that he saw somebody possibly getting killed and then somebody might be dead like i think he's gonna drop it and i think you know he just kind of goes on and, and wanders and maybe is that what it's saying about like you know people in general and you know but i don't know i enjoyed it this time around knowing that i wasn't expecting a resolution to it and so then i think this time i read the ending and the yard bird scene as like somehow talking about like symbolically like okay this is the movie that you've been watching you know and so it's like okay that's how you're trying to express this we don't really do that so much anymore like you know i think that comes from like the drug culture uh, you know, you're, you're, there's a lot more like inner, um, exploration and they're trying to do that in film through, you know, I'm going to put these symbols out there and everybody's going to get it. Cause they're all going to be stoned watching it mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll be thinking about it this way. I don't know, but, uh, you know, easy rider and all the movies that seem to come from this, uh, 1960s, uh, era had that, um, to them a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. This time I actually did enjoy blow up do i think that you need to see it i think uh you know as it's it's one of those signposts on the uh you know if you're looking at the evolution of film i think uh yeah i mean as a historical document of the f evolution of the motion picture i think uh blowout is probably uh an important one to hit but whether or not it'll connect with you uh you know, as a, oh, I want to watch something fun or, you know, have a nice evening of just like, oh, I'll throw this on. <laughs> no, this one's one you got to actually see. No, you don't just throw this you, on. You're watching, uh, this is a, a, a movie. So, um, you, you know how we said with uh, In a Violent Nature, it like just wasn't satisfying? That's yeah. kind of how I feel about this movie, too. It's like, it's not satisfying. Yeah, that makes Because there's no resolution. Because so. that was like the most recent thing where we, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, maybe that's like going, it's coming from the same. Those movies are cut um, from the same cloth for sure. Yeah, but in a violent nature, I, I think it was trying to explain, mm -hmm. I think, through some kind of symbolism there at the end, like the movie that you had watched, but it was just kind of like, yeah, it's 2024. I, I, I got it. it. <laughs> you know, like, 
So, I caught up to you a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Because I've seen movies like this yes, that did yeah. it, you know, <laughs> a long time. I don't know. But uh, I would I would recommend it, I guess, uh, under the, the, yeah, yes. Sean, what do you think? <laughs> uh, uh, whereas uh, Colin may have m- maybe need to push out that recommend a, l- a little harder than most. I'm going to full-fledged say that I really, really enjoyed this movie tonight. Really loved it. Um, oh, I really, um, I think I, I really, I think I really loved everything about this movie. Like I, I like that it doesn't like the it is meandering. I love that we don't get a, a, a conclusion about anything of this. I love that we uh, question uh, at the end of this movie. We question whether the character went through any of this. That's what we got to. Like we, we don't know. Maybe he didn't. Um, uh, but um, just just following this character and 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 what he goes through. Um. There are so many aspects of this movie. Um, it is. It, it, I think it's. It's a movie you you have to like feel as you're watching it. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but like as you're going through it, like I I really liked. I liked how it 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 felt. I liked watching this character experience these things. Um, as I hate. I hate verbally or audibly relating to an artist because I think that's I'm pretentious enough as it is. I don't like expressing myself as an artist out loud because I think it makes me feel pretentious, but I do feel certain things about being an artist that come through in this movie. Maybe not so much the, 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 uh, uh, sexiness of it all or the, uh, the manipulation of it all. You know, when it comes to uh, uh, how he acts with his subjects. in, See, in being in, someone who's very sexy and manipulative, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, Holly expressed it. I'll take it on as my own. Um, but, yeah, I really like this movie. I, I don't, I love, it just feels, it just feels art, artistic. And, you know, just in, just in that alone. I like it. I, I, I like the um, I like the atmosphere of it. I love where this guy lives. I love his apartment. I, I love how that transfer like uh, represents him as an artist. I love that he's got to walk across that fucking platform to get back and forth in his place. Um, I love the process, the physical process of what he's got to do to figure out what's going on. I think um, it, it's something we're, we I, we miss in movies. As technology advances, I think we're we're missing out on a physicality of certain things. Uh, I think we're I think there's a lot of thinking that is done for us now that is we have that can be physically represented in older movies that I think comes across in this movie of him f- figuring out what's going on. Not this man is not trying to figure out who murdered who. He's just trying. He's trying to figure out the subjects of what he's photographed and what, and what has happened. It's uh, there. It's just, I, you know, I, uh, I, I it's just did the feeling of this movie. I don't know. I, I don't think I can fully encapsulate how this movie made me feel. I know I liked it. I know that it is. Um, I, I think it's everything everyone said. And the, I think the perspectives of everyone here is valid and how you feel about it. Um, but I, I just like the, the artisticness of it. Um, I love that, you know, we don't get an answer. I don't think you need an answer because what is life of, of fucking years of no answers of anything. So, um, but, and I think that, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really like this movie. I, it just, if it is like a two days in the life of someone, um, I really enjoyed watching it and there's just, there, there's a, a certain something to it, a taste to it, something that just, Yeah. I really liked. I'm, I'll recommend this movie to anyone. Like I, I might pick this up on the Criterion. Like it just, it, just, it's good. I can see how it inspired, it inspired thrillers going forward. Uh, it, it is. It doesn't necessarily. Uh, when you say thriller, I wouldn't label this as that. Mm-hmm. But I was thrilled buy it in the process mm-hmm. of where we were going. It doesn't, the thrill doesn't have to be like adrenaline rush thrill or anything like that, but watching him try and figure out what was going on. Um, uh, Vanessa Redgrave's performance again, I think adds to that because she's in a whole nother 
portion of this movie where she's like she's got something going on where mm-hmm. uh, uh she's she's anxious she's like in a different story she is and yeah. i and i like that story that is not necessarily a main part of this movie but mm-hmm. is happening if it is happening because we don't know if it's happening mm-hmm. because you can come to the end of this movie and maybe that didn't happen and i love that that, that this movie allows that as a possibility. Mm-hmm. And I love the possibilities of this movie. I love that you can, that you are able to, uh, uh, that we can come away from this movie and discuss those different aspects of, of if they did happen, if they didn't, I love the, I think a wide conversation you can have from watching this movie. Um, I think there's, there's, I think there's so much to this movie. Um, yeah, I really liked it a lot. Um, I recommend it. Uh, Holly, take us home. Yeah. This is a good one. This yeah. is like, so we go cinema in a, in a, in, 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 the freak show, in the freak show basement where we don't, you know, um, and you, where we don't necessarily delve into this uh, too often. We do because, you know, we love movies and everything yeah. and not necessarily everything has to be hard to get to Hawaii. But I, I love that we bring these things and they allow for this conversation. So, yeah, no, that's that's exactly why I brought it. I was like, you know, every once in a while we got to throw in something different, something meaty, something different that we don't normally do. Um, Yeah. Going when I when I picked it, I had a very different impression of what this movie was going to be from from them when I started actually like looking into it. So I'm glad I was able to shift my perspective mm. going into it. I no longer thought like, Oh, this is going to be like a sex crazed uh, <laughs> thriller mystery. Like that's not what we're about to watch. I'm glad I was able to shift that perspective ahead of time um, because I probably would have uh, been upset with the result, but I really like this movie. I really enjoyed it. It is very slow meandering. Yes. I, I totally understand um, but it's, th- there's so much to be interpreted and I love a movie that allows you to do that. Um, nowadays we get everything that is so literal, so in your face, we're fed everything, we're spoon, in the fucking, fed, everything, we're spoon yeah. fed everything in the fucking trailer. Like I'm, I'm tired yeah. of that. So I like a movie like this that we can draw our own conclusions from start to end. Um, we can make our own interpretations. There's symbolism. There's. Like I said, there's there's multiple stories happening that we don't see, and it's just I I I like that we're filling in the blanks. I like that we're we're able to in, to dissect this movie. I don't think we get enough movies like that anymore. Um, you know, I I I, I was glad that Michaela could at least appreciate that it was like a mod '60s vibe, <laughs> um, because that's that's something I love too. Um, the swinging London. I just, I love it. I love the yard birds. I, the, the vibe is totally great. And I agree, Sean, I, I know, I don't, I know that I don't particularly like the character, mm. but I like watching him. Mm-hmm. Like he's an asshole and he, like Michaela said, he represents like a persona of our artists that like, it's just totally repelling and I can't stand people like that. But I I am like gripped by his story. I am, I am, yes. I am engrossed in watching his life and watching like, I, I love his studio. I love the environment around him. Um, there's, there's something very enticing about watching his days unfold. Um, so even though he's a terrible person, <laughs> it is entertaining to watch. And I, I, yeah, I think someone, one of our listeners wrote in and said that they were, they were completely, what did they say? They were completely, like engrossed or engrossed and thrall something. Something. Yeah. Put, put him uh Steve Carney said it put him under his its spell. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's how I felt watching this. I was like, this is a long movie. It's it's a slow burn, but I was completely under its spell the whole time. So yeah, I, I'm gonna recommend it. Um if you're look like we said, if you're looking for an actual thriller, this is probably not what you're looking for. <laughs> But if you want to see um, what inspired so many great movies after it and was so influential in the 60s, I, I think it's definitely a it's definitely a movie that you need to watch. But yeah, I'm going to recommend it. I think it's great. Maybe it's just in sound design that this isn't a thriller. Like in sound design and shot selection, it it just I, because there's no it, tension in this movie for there to I, be a I, I, I don't. I, I, I thought think, there was tension. I think there's no 
payoff. Yeah. Wow. I think you know, it's never of, released. I think there's a lot of tension, but it becomes it comes naturally because the the camera work is not trying to build tension. Right, I don't think the so music I'm, is not trying to build tension. I think right, it comes I'm naturally. I'm not arguing from about it. what the movie did. I'm arguing about how the movie sold and presented. Sure. Because Ooh. IMDb lists giallo, drama, mystery, thriller is what it describes. <laughs> right. Do you see why I feel misled? That's fine, but you yeah. you, you gotta you gotta drop what the world's telling you and just go but, with but what reading, you get at I, a certain point. I know nothing about this movie, so I do what I do with every movie. Look it up that we watch. I look it up on IMDb. Ah, but that, okay, now we're that, but that's on you. But not no, the this movie. Isn't on me. But it is on you because you're choosing to search this stuff out uh, uh, this as is a description what it exists for this movie. For. Yeah, that's the whole but point that, of a movie but synopsis. You don't, but you don't have to do that. Uh, but then I would have known. I know, but I just wanted to at least know what the movie is about because I had you, never but, even heard oh, it and right, I knew nothing that's, about it. But you got to realize that's the risk you take with I, looking I know, that but, shit up. But I'm... I'm but this that's why this information exists. It's the Internet Movie Database. It exists to tell me these details so I know what to expect. That's why it exists. And I'm saying this doesn't line up with the movie I got. Yeah, if you're if you're going but into it based that's on that's not their fault though. I mean, it is. It is it though. Is. <laughs> it's a mis, it's a misrepresentation. Yeah, <sighs> okay. it's not a giallo. Okay. It's okay. not not nothing giallo about it other than it's like Italian. That's it. Yeah. Like there's nothing. They're trying giallo to about this sell. Movie. That's a log well, right. line yeah. on some yeah. distributors. Right, like, this right. Is trying to get you. Yeah. Right, but trying, I mean, but, how, reali- but realistically, I, we're not ever trying to find out who the killer is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you were trying to sell this movie to somebody in the line, it's a drama. It's a drama. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's a uh, <laughs> blow up uh, Drama. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, next week, we're watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. Mm-hmm. Where do we go from here? We're next going week. back to w- the, the roots of the show. What the oh. show's all about. We're going to watch Maxine. We're going to take a freak show field trip. Oh, shit. Oh, all right. Oh, oh no. Right. No, I have to watch Maxine. <laughs> yes. All right. The third in the Thai West, is it the X series? The X trilogy, yeah. X trilogy. I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though there's no X in Pearl, but there isn't that barn door, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah. laughs> all right, Maxine, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.